Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Carolyn. I'm a registered nurse certified in hospice and palliative care. The following is the holistic assessment of the older adult from module seven of N495 health assessment for Aspen University. Assessing an older adult can be met with challenges depending on the comfort level of the patient to share private information with the nurse. Meeting the patient in their own home at a time that works well for their daily schedule can increase their willingness to answer questions and allow for a physical assessment. Answering questions regarding loss and health inconsistencies can be met with resistance. So it is in the best interest of the nurse to provide reassurance to the patient that the information is confidential and will only be shared with those involved in her clinical care. Objectives. By the end of this presentation, the participant will be able to understand some of the common ailments of the older adult in her mid-70s, recite interventions for improving one's health, explain some of the coping mechanisms older adults use to deal with grief and loneliness, detail physiological changes in the older adult, recognize common social changes in the older adult, and discuss ways of approaching goals to improve physical and mental health. Case study. Holistic assessment of the patient took place in the in-law apartment of her younger daughter's home. Patient is a 76 year old female. She is alert and oriented times three. Patient was married for 44 years to her high school sweetheart who passed away after a two year illness related to his service in Vietnam. Patient has two grown daughters, one which she lives with in her daughter's home with her daughter's family, and the other daughter lives 40 miles away. Patient had a daughter that was stillborn five years after having her younger daughter. Her faith is of great importance to her. She has difficulty throwing things away or getting rid of items she has had for many years because as she reports, quote unquote, they have meaning to me. She has many photos of her four teenage grandsons throughout her apartment. General health history. Patient re reports the following past medical history. She states she has high blood pressure, but does not monitor it herself and is checked regularly, regularly at her, quote, many doctor's appointments. She has hyperlipidemia, which she takes Prevastatin because she had issues with atorvastatin. She reports back in 2017, she was driving down the street and when she got to the end of the street, she did not know what to do. She eventually turned back home and called her daughter who was working and the daughter called her husband to take her to the ER. She reports it wasn't a stroke and they questioned a TIA. She reports she has gained 20 pounds since her right total knee replacement in March. 
She reports she has always struggled with being overweight and has tried many diets. She also reports she weighs herself daily. She reports uterine fibroids that used to cause great discomfort and cervical spinal stenosis that causes occasional neck pain that she reports is managed with PRN Tylenol. She reports increased depression since the loss of her husband in 2014. She has vertigo, which when it is, quote, bad, keeps her from walking up and down stairs and driving. She reports she quit smoking in the early 1980s. She reports bilateral bunions with hammer toes, which makes buying shoes difficult related to the overlapping toe, making most shoes unable to fit. She reports her provider recommended having the toe amputated to increase her comfort. Physiological assessment. Patient is well nourished and clean. Patient denies pain, although grimaces occasionally when ambulating. Patient reports she has a right total, she had a right total knee replacement on March 1st of 2021. She reports following all of the doctor's orders after her surgery and did all of her physical and occupational therapy, but does not report having much relief related to knee immobility and discomfort after the surgery. She reports a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, GERD, vitamin D deficiency, and question of TIA in 2017. She has a family history of cardiac disease, her father dying at the age of 61, and breast and lung cancer, her mother dying at the age of 89. She receives annual mammograms for surveillance. She has a BMI of 30.2 which falls into the obese category. Psychological assessment. Patient was visibly uncomfortable at the start of the psychological assessment. I encouraged her to take her time and reminded her the information would not be shared with anyone but her provider. Patient has a history of depression and anxiety. Patient has experienced many losses throughout her life, starting with her father, who passed in his early 60s, her daughter, who was stillborn at eight months, her mother and aunt, who she cared for in her own home, and then her husband of 44 years at the age of 69. Patient never received bereavement or grief counseling to deal with her losses and managed with medication and daily alcohol use. Patient became teary when she reported feeling she is a burden. She feels like she is a burden on her daughter and the rest of the family in the home. Social assessment. Patient reports she has a great group of friends and they always did things together as couples. She was the first of their friends to lose their spouse and it has been hard. She feels like the third wheel when she gets together with one of the couples or is too sad missing her husband when she gets together 
with all of them. She has a similar routine every day and loves to go shopping for things to decorate for the holidays or to buy special treats for her grandsons. She reports watching all the old TV programs like Westerns and old game shows. Cultural assessment. Patient reports her ancestors are from England, Ireland, and Scotland. She states, I'm American. We never really researched our ancestry or cultural traditions. Patient loves going to church and decorating for the holidays. Patient continues to drive and bought herself a new car at the end of last year after reluctantly trading in the car she and her husband shared. Patient visits her doctor more frequently than she would like. Patient has a flip phone and does not have much interest in learning how to use a computer. Developmental assessment. Patient's weight has decreased the mobility the patient thought she would have after her right total knee replacement. Patient reported her doctor told her when she was in her early 60s, she needed her right knee replaced, but kept putting it off and then was caring for her ill husband. Patient admits recovering from surgery would have been much easier in her 60s than it has been in her mid 70s. Spiritual assessment. Patient has a strong faith in God and the Catholic Church. Patient says the rosary and views mass daily on TV. Interpretations. Patient has never received appropriate therapy for the many losses she has had over the years. She reports her mother was very stern and not affectionate, so she would not have been encouraged to talk about her feelings and would move on to caring for the next person who needed her assistance. She enjoys having her wine each evening and when she goes out with friends. She relies on the alcohol for sleep as well. She would prefer having an extra drink to cope rather than taking an Ativan because she reports she feels too foggy after the Ativan. She may have better coping mechanisms if she had received therapy or sought, sought a support group after losing her loved ones. She is very concerned with gaining weight. By weighing herself daily, but continues to have sweets visible in her apartment. She enjoys buying sweets and treats for her family as a way of showing she loves them. She was an only child and never needed to share her toys or material items with anyone. She has clutter throughout her apartment, yet she has a history of claustrophobia.
Recommendations. My recommendation for this patient is to leave the house daily. She could go for a walk in the neighborhood cul-de-sac or use the treadmill her daughter has in the basement. She has always loved caring for the elderly. She could volunteer at a local nursing home or assisted living or get a job to be a companion with an elder. I would recommend making a friend outside of her circle of friends. Physical goal and teaching strategy. Her weight and recent history of a right knee replacement are affecting her mobility. Priority is weight loss. Write out a schedule at the beginning of each week to walk for at least 30 minutes, two to three times per week. Maintain the exercises that were given post-op for better knee mobility. Make better food choices by making a grocery list and sticking to the list. Talk to your podiatrist about getting the hammer toes removed for better mobility and comfort. Psychological goal and teaching strategy. I will locate a bereavement group for wives of veterans. Plan to attend the group and give it at least four attempts to see if you find them therapeutic for your ongoing grief. Venture out of your daily routine by trying a new hobby. When you leave the house, change your destination from the cemetery and the grocery store to places like the local senior center or local library. Be available to talk one-to-one -one with your daughter about new goals and your feelings of being burdensome to her and her family. Social goal and teaching strategy. Rather than you going to your friends' houses, Host an afternoon tea and invite them to your home slash apartment. See a movie. Ask one of your grandsons to show you how to access the internet on one of their laptops or tablets. Once you know how to access the internet, have them show you how to set up a Facebook profile. You may reunite with people you have not seen in years like old classmates. Save the money from going to the grocery store frequently for a trip or vacation, either alone or with a friend. Maintain COVID precautions by always wearing a mask in public. Decrease daily alcohol intake related to increased risk of dependency and falls. Cultural goal and teaching strategy. People often do well completing tasks or goals if they have them written down and look at them frequently. Write down your thoughts and feelings. Look back after doing it for 30 days and see how your mood and daily activities improved over the 30 days. Do not deprive yourself of every food you love. Give yourself a sweet reward occasionally. Developmental goal and teaching strategy. The more you walk up and down your stairs, the better your mobility will improve and you may lose weight. Write down your finances and give yourself a weekly allowance. Have your daughter get involved so she can help to keep you accountable. Consult your orthopedic surgeon once you have lost weight and have the left knee replaced. spiritual goal and teaching strategy. Continue to say the rosary daily and when you are with your friends, friend or friends, ask them if they'd like to join you. Go to in-person church as often as you can to get out of the house and interact with others that have similar spiritual beliefs. Write down a, spirit, a daily spiritual affirmation. Evaluation. 
I will check with the patient on a weekly basis at the beginning of the evaluation period by phone and plan to meet with the patient monthly to assess her goals. I will encourage her to communicate her goals and interventions to her daughter so she can have her be a source of accountability. I recommend short-term goals in the beginning and once she achieves those goals, she can set bigger goals for herself such as having the hammer toes removed or scheduling her left total knee replacement. Have her keep a list of unattainable goals and write down what barriers kept her from achieving the goal. Thank you.